I'm Phil Gale. Welcome to the programme. The UN Security Council has failed to pass a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Russia and China vetoed the resolution which had been put forward by the United States. The measure called for an immediate and sustained ceasefire tied to the release of hostages held by Hamas. It's the fourth time the Council has failed to pass a vote calling for a ceasefire. Here's a US ambassador to the UN. Let's be honest, for all the fiery rhetoric, we all know that Russia and China are not doing anything diplomatically to advance a lasting peace or to meaningfully contribute to the humanitarian response effort. Colleagues, there is obviously another resolution that some of you would like to be considered, but in its current form, that text fails to support sensitive diplomacy in the region. Worse, it, 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 it could actually give Hamas an excuse to walk away from the deal on the table. Let's go to our uh, Washington correspondent, Stefan uh, Simon. Welcome, uh, Stefan. So, Russia and China vetoing this UN, uh, US sponsored ceasefire uh, resolution. Um, was this expected? No, actually, it wasn't expected. You know, uh, the staff uh, of the uh, U.S. ambassador to the U.N. worked, the diplomats in the State Department and the White House here, worked for weeks on the on a draft, on the text for this. So I think before they brought this to the uh, U.N. Security Council, they were actually at least largely hopeful that it would pass, perhaps, because, as you mentioned, four times now, including this one, that the Security Council failed um, uh, going forward with a, any resolution, three times of uh, those four times the U.S. vetoed, now it's China and Russia. And, of course, uh, the feeling here in the U.S. is that the Russia and, the, uh, and China did this not, as uh, we just heard from the ambassador, U.S. ambassador to the U.N., did this for actually diplomatic reasons, but to put the U.S. in a box to basically, let's say, stick it to the man. Um, they want a unconditional ceasefire the U.S. was, and that is, by the way, a major shift in their policy already. Uh, I have to really emphasize this. This was a major step forward. The U.S. now calling for a immediate and sustained ceasefire that was officially not enough for the Russians and the Chinese. All right. Well, uh, given that massive change of U.S. position, it, it, it does sound uh, hypocritical for the U.S. now to criticise uh, uh, the, the likes of uh, Russia and China for vetoing, when, as you say, uh, they have vetoed three times themselves. Why is it different? Why does the, U why does the U.S. regard this as being different uh, from those other three times when they uh, were the vetoers? Well... From a U.S. perspective, this is a major leap of the Biden White House and the U.S. administration to call out Israel and say, like, listen, you need to stop your uh, what you're doing, basically, in not allowing enough humanitarian aid into Gaza. We need a ceasefire. We need it now, immediately, and it needs to be able to be sustained. That means indefinite. It needs to be indefinite. As long as we need, the U.S. and other partners need to put more aid, push massive aid needs and, and uh, satisfy those massive aid needs in Gaza. The CIA director, William Burns, is, as we speak now in Qatar, actually, um, you know, negotiating, working on a deal with Hamas for a hostage release that is still really imperative for the United States, should be for Israel, too. You know, Mr. Blinken is in Israel right now. It's not, it doesn't seem to turn out being a good day for U.S. diplomacy here. But again, the U.S. is going compared to what they did before or what they were able to and willing to say before, the extra mile now saying sustained and immediate ceasefire and lots of lots of aid immediately into Gaza. It's not going to happen via the UN uh, Security Council and via a resolution. You may want to say, does that actually matter if the UN and the UN Security Council um, uh, adopts a resolution which says that, or is it more important for the US and others just to push forward with aid into Gaza to help those people there in a very, very, very difficult situation? Well, that's not for me to decide. Okay, so uh, briefly then, uh, Stefan, um, where does the, uh, how does the US proceed from here? I think uh, the U.S. is for the time being done with pushing any resolution. Uh, it will in the U.N., uh, but uh, 
diplomatic efforts will continue. And I think the Biden administration has to, also for political reasons here within the United States. Remember, we have a presidential campaign, presidential elections this year, and the Biden administration needs some success on this topic, Gaza-Israel war, uh, because of American uh, Arab or Arab American voters. Uh, so they will push forward. That's why Mr. Blinken is in the Middle East. That's why the CIA director is in, in Qatar. And that's why the U.S. administration as a whole will push forward to get their agenda through and get a ceasefire into Gaza. Okay, Stefan Simons in uh, Washington. Thank you so much. All right, I want to go now to Tel Aviv. I'm joined by Myraz Zanzain of the International Crisis Group. She's a senior analyst focused on Israeli-Palestinian issues and regional conflicts. It's good to have you with us. Russia and China vetoing this U.S.-sponsored resolution. What do you make of that? Did, it, did you expect this vote? Well, I think uh, it's, it's pretty clear that the U.S. is trying to at least appear to be doing something on the front uh, of the Israel-Gaza war. But uh, in effect, the U.S. has not called for a ceasefire, a permanent ceasefire, which I think everybody understands at this point is necessary because of the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. Uh, Russia and China, of course, have their own interests uh, in, in vetoing or abstaining or going against the U.S. resolution politically. But either way, the resolution itself did not call for a ceasefire without condition, which is, I believe, what many of the members were looking for. And, and the fact that this U.S.-backed resolution failed to pass in the UN Security Council. Can Israel now claim this as a, a sort of victory? Well, Israel claims plenty of victories when it can. The ICJ, South Africa hearing, the fact that it didn't uh, actually re call for a ceasefire or, or uh, uh, decide that Israel was actually committing genocide, only the potential was claimed as a victory by Israel. Um, you know, so Israel could certainly claim this as a victory. Israel still has full U.S. backing for this war, uh, mm -hmm. and it continues uh, with its offensive and continues to make threats as, about Rafah as well.